A number of people here, including Mandy Fairfax in South Wales. What's Phil Tufnell's favourite film? Uh, my favourite film is... Oh, gosh. Um, Would you like me to come back to you? I, mean, I either know it instantly or you don't. Really. I would say Apocalypse Now. Oh, it's not a bad choice. Which version? Um, I don't know. I can't really remember what... I was, okay. I was a bit... Hung over, I think, when I was watching the one when. Um, no, no, I don't do the. But is it the version that ends with 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 the with, with the, the the bridge and the bombing of the bridge and is it the seventy mil? Pre I'm sorry, this is a ter terribly nerdy <laughs> question, but it doesn't matter. Apocalypse now, good choice. Good, good choice. choice. Good choice. Um, uh, I'm not sure how long we've got, Mark, but you've got. Can I do Green Street very quickly. Oh, the, yes. Well, have I got time for that? Well, keep going until I say okay, stop. Basically, here's the deal. Green Street is a film about football hooliganism. It is a, an American Anglo co-production directed by a German woman starring Elijah Wood as a Harvard graduate who gets kicked out of Harvard, comes to England, joins the West Ham firm and discovers that actually the salvation of his life is in football violence. He discovers this by hanging out with Charlie Hunnan, who is doing a worse Cockney accent than Dick Van Dyke. It is, it is, no, it's, I mean, that, that is, it is literally like, yes, we are speaking Cockney rhyming slang over here, me old man. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm sorry, I, I, I mean, I've heard bad Cockney my, done by, by Americans and done by, you know, by people. That, but how on earth do you justify this? Mark. Feel free to take as long as you like. The players are walking off. Very good. <laughs> Johnny okay. Saunders, hang on. They, they, walk, they all came out again. Yes. They, 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 they off again. They this like is where cricket really does itself no favours. Every ball bowled in this five days because uh, I don't think it's going to go the full duration. So you, so you, so you were saying about well, that no, movie listen, no, earlier. No, no, listen, it's perfectly fine because in that case, because we have got a clip of Green Street, and I, I know I just did my impression of Charlie Hunnam. You can hear, because I think this is what the clip is of, the majestic acting talents. But it is, it would be really offensive were it not so badly done. <laughs> On the one hand, there is just the lunacy of Frodo goes to football. I mean, that is what you keep thinking. Even when he's in the middle of these, you know, you think, I'm sorry, I can't take that seriously. The worst thing about it, however, is that I think it does have an underlying ideology, which is that actually there is something good about this gang mentality. I mean, I have here the director's statement by Lexi Alexander, which says, the reason I made this movie is you never run, you never leave your friends behind. Getting arrested and not remembering anyone's name when the police question you, that's love. Standing next to your friend strong when 30 other guys are facing you, want to punch your face, that's... No, I'm sorry, that's not love, that's football hooliganism. And only somebody who had a ludicrously romanticised view of it could have made a movie that, it, that you know, attempts to endorse it in this way. I mean, there is literally a bit at the end of the film when Elijah Wood hopes that he can live up to the fabulous legacy that he has been left by Charlie Hunnam's character. It would have been really, really offensive were it not for the fact that you just spent the whole film with your jaw on the floor thinking, I cannot take any of this seriously. Well, so why did... Because um, it was nice talking to Elijah Wood, you know? I mean, obviously he's a very he's made nice his, chap. And he's made his name in, uh, in Lord of the Rings. Yes. He must have been attracted by something. Well, one, he can pick and choose. One presumes that he thought what he was doing. I mean, it, it's, it's a decision, I have to say, made by an outsider. Somebody looking into somebody else's culture and thinking, that looks interesting and authentic. And clearly, uh, because uh, Lexi Alexander clearly has some kind of experience of the world which she is describing, I think he's just been... I think he's made a very bad decision. I mean, I, I, I really do think it's a film whose, uh, whose, whose morality, if there is a morality, in amidst the nonsense. I mean, the final, the final punch-up in it reminded me of the final scenes of Braveheart. I mean, I half expected somebody to shout freedom whilst being tortured on a rack by fiendish English. I mean, it is really that level of, of dumb. And it, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, that everyone involved in it recognises it for the clunker that it is. But it would have been offensive had it not just been so bad. Um, no play at the Oval and the covers are on. Uh, Australia 112 uh, for no wicket. Julian Warwicker here with uh, drive and uh, England need a talismanic change of presenter. So that's what will be happening. Uh, and uh, it'll all be fine once Julian takes over. Uh, all Mark's uh, reviews are available on download, of course, in case you miss any of them. Um, it, the accents then, the, the fact that they're hopeless sounds like the least offensive thing in it. Well, it's my favourite hopeless accent is is still it's only very very brief but it's the lookout in titanic oh when he says god blimey iceberg yeah enormous just, great iceberg ahead governor yeah we, he almost inserts mary poppins in there <laughs> just to make us realize 
that it is a really rubbish accent. Yeah, no. Uh, the, well, the thing with some of the accents in Green Street are, of course, you know, genuinely quite well done. But if you if you put Green Street in the canon of great films about football hooliganism, which I, you know, obviously the firm, the Alan Clark TV film, which is clearly the best of the genre, uh, Phil Davis's ID, which I think is largely underrated, The Football Factory, which is the film that Nick Love made before he made The Business, which I think is far too leery for its own good, is a much better film. I just think it's, it's an embarrassing footnote. It does, like I said, the worst thing about it is that it, it is completely muddle-headed in its philosophy.